Uh, thank you, Madam President. I, I rise today to, to speak to an amendment that we will have on the floor tomorrow afternoon. Uh, this, is, this is an amendment that certainly uh, has generated a fair amount of interest within my state. In fact, uh, really most of our coastal states, anywhere where we have an interest in seafood and the seafood industry, um, it has been kind of unceremoniously dubbed uh, the Frankenfish Amendment. So my apologies to my colleague who, who just uh, yielded the floor to me. Uh, certainly no affront to him. But, but uh, what we are speaking about today is a genetically engineered salmon. And uh, it has been uh, somewhat affectionately dubbed Frankenfish because of the images that this genetically engineered fish conjures up. A, a, a fish that uh, would, would literally be growing in size, doubling in size, um, uh, unlike the, the fish that we see in our, in our streams and in our water. So what is happening today is the FDA is, is on path to, a, to approve an application for this genetically engineered fish. And I want to discuss the amendment that I have uh, filed, which would require NOAA to conduct a full environmental assessment and analysis of economic impacts to affected fisheries before the FDA approves any of these genetically engineered fish. So I, I, I start my comments by saying I am not looking to, to, to pull the plug on the FDA. I am not looking to uh, insert Congress's judgment into the FDA process. I am asking that when we are talking about a, a, uh, a, a, a basically a new fishery for a modified salmon, I'm asking that the agency that is tasked with our fisheries have some role in, in what is moving forward. So let me give you a little bit of, of background in terms of what we're talking about with this genetically engineered fish, this, this frankenfish. This, is, this would be a, a fish, an Atlantic salmon, that uh, has, gene, has DNA spliced from a Chinook salmon with that of what they call an ocean pout, which is some kind of an eel type of a fish that apparently is in, is in colder waters. Um, but the, the, the technology that FDA is looking at that would allow for this genetic engineering would, would essentially provide for a fish that would grow to market size in about half the time of, of a conventional salmon. So in other words, a, a, a salmon out in the wild takes about 30 months to gain full maturity. With this frankenfish, or this genetically modified salmon, uh, they could be of good market size, basically good eating size, within about 15 to 18 months. So you're thinking, okay, well, how can this be bad? We get a salmon that looks like a salmon, and it's, it, it comes to us uh, in, in half the time. So, so how can this be a bad thing? And I would like to share with you why I feel this is a, a bad thing. And when I'm talking, I, I, you will hear me talking about salmon because that's what the FDA process is engaged with right now. But I will tell you that we understand that similar efforts are, are underway to develop a genetically modified trout, as well as genetically modified tilapia, again, designed to grow faster than occurs in, in, in nature, in, uh, out, out, out in the wild. The pending application for the salmon would be the very first food from a transgenic animal that's been approved by the FDA. So this is really precedent setting. People have suggested that, well, we, we see this in, in other forms of, of agriculture, but the fact is this would be the first food from a transgenic animal application that has been approved by the FDA. So, so this is, is, is really quite precedent setting. What is happening 
is this approval process for the, the genetically engineered fish continues to move forward as a new animal drug rather than what it really is, what I mentioned before, which is a new fishery for this modified salmon, this, this salmon that has been tinkered with, basically a test tube salmon. Um, so the reasons why I think this is a bad thing to be messing with Mother Nature and to encourage, to encourage the, this unnatural growth. We heard on the floor this morning Senator from New Jersey, Senator uh, from New York, both stood and talked about uh, a measure that's out there, the march that was out on the, on the Capitol yesterday, mothers concerned about uh, toxins in the food supply, toxins in the world around us, and, and knowing what is out there, knowing what we are exposed to. Well, I, along with many cons uh, consumers out there, am concerned about genetically engineered animal products that are intended for human consumption, including those that are in our marine resources. Now, I'm, uh, I'm not the best cook in the family, my husband is, but I want to know, he wants to know, our kids want to know, that what we're eating is good and safe and sound. At home, we eat a lot of salmon. And I can stand there and tell my kids, eat this. This is brain food. This is good for you. It's loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. It's as good as you can possibly get. And I can say that with certainty. We can't say that. We won't be able to say that with this genetically engineered fish. As a mom, I'm not going to say to my kids, eat this frankenfish. Not quite sure what an eel pout is or an ocean pout. Not really quite sure how they splice this DNA together. Not quite sure whether they've really made it sterile or not. Not quite sure what it is, but go ahead and eat it because it came to market quick and we're going to be able to get a cheaper price on it. I think we care. We, we want to know. We want to know the process here. And the scary thing with the FDA right now, they are very reluctant, Madam President, to label genetically engineered products, even though it allows the public to know what they're eating. The data out there is pretty clear. Higher human allergen uh, effects with, with genetically engineered fish. Now, if you're a mom and your kids have allergies, are you going to look at this fish and say, huh, I wonder if, I wonder if this is going to set your allergies off? No. You know what you're going to do? You're going to stay away from it. You're not going to serve that. To, to your kids. You're not going to serve that to your family. Even though you know the wild stuff is good, is healthy. But how do you know which is which? If the FDA isn't moving forward to label, and you're not quite sure whether or not what, you, what you're buying in the grocery store is as advertised, how are we helping the consumer here? How, how are we helping them at all? So the first problem that I have is this, is this is, again, a product that's intended for human consumption, and we've got some real concerns about the, the, the safety of the food, the safety of it in the first place. Second, and this is, this is one that, uh, as an Alaskan, where we have very strong fisheries, a very healthy fisheries, I worry about what will happen if, in fact, there is escape into the wild by these genetically engineered fish. You've got a frankenfish that gets loose. Now, they'll tell you they're, not dis they're, they're going to be in pens. We will make sure that there's no escapement. But how can they guarantee that? How can they make sure that we're not going to see escapement? We've seen escapement clearly from the farm fish that come and mingle with the wild stocks. We see the disease that can be transmitted. How is any of this good? Even though this, this, this genetically engineered fish supposedly is going to be kept in a closed system, onshore pens, the possibility of, of escape, it is recognized, is, is still out there, it still exists. And then what you're going to have, you're going to have gen these, these genetically engineered fish that are going to breed year-round, they are also going to be eating year-round. They're going to be feeding year-round. And what you, what you can very possibly see is this competition with the wild stock. They will compete with one another for the food, uh, 
for the food that the species feed on. They'll wreak havoc with the ecosystem. So you are, you are introducing, and granted, not intentionally, but you can introduce into the ecosystem a, a fish that just doesn't work with our wild stock. Unlike hatchery-produced fish, these genetically engineered fish would, would reportedly be sterilized and their hormones altered. But, but many scientists believe that the FDA testing to confirm the agricultural safety and the sterilization of these fish is sufficient. We see this in the CRS report uh, that has looked specifically to this issue. So uh, unlike, unlike other agricultural products, if, if you've got an escape of frankenfish, it would be to an uncontrolled marine environment exposing the ecosystems to associated risks. If you have a, 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 a cow that has been genetically modified, the cow is on land, gets out of the, gets out of the, 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 the pen, um, you, you have more ability to control. You don't have the ability to control in a marine environment. It's just not possible. So what is happening is we are putting at risk the health and the safety of our wild stocks, unacceptable. Third, many find the FDA process for approving an animal product intended for human consumption, uh, as it would uh, a, a veterinary drug, to be insufficient. It lacks the robustness and the transparency that one would expect for a product that would be treated as a substitute for fish that's currently on our dinner plates in this country today. The, the CRS report, uh, which I uh, just mentioned, uh, and I'd like to, to introduce for, to the record uh, a report by CRS dated June 7 of, of last year, Genetically Engineered Fish and Seafood Environmental Concerns. And one of the, one of the uh, concerns that is raised in this report, and I quote, a National Research Council report stated that transgenic fish pose the greatest science-based concerns associated with animal biotechnology, in large part due to the uncertainty inherent in identifying environmental problems early on and the difficulty of remediation once a problem has been identified. Madam President, our fishermen are very, very highly regulated. Any change to a federal fishery, including a new GE fishery, should be analyzed for environmental effects and economic impacts to affected businesses and fishing communities. That's what we're doing in this simple amendment. We're bringing NOAA in to say, be part of this process. And then the last point that I'd like to make on this is the very significant economic consequences of approving a genetically engineered fish. Historically, the entrance and the growth of, of farm salmon in the marketplace has had ne negative impacts on our salmon industry. We've got, we've got incredible, abundant wild stocks. We're very proud of it. Um, it is the seafood industry in the state of Alaska is our second largest employer, 500 million X vessel value with, with salmon alone. But the concern is, Although we have very strong wild stocks, we could see the market respond with, with fear. Unreasonable, but, but still respond with fear and confusion to the introduction and the growth of engineered fish, particularly if it is not labeled. This, in my opinion, could have devastating impact on, on our fish industry, the jobs that it supports, um, and clearly at a, at a time that it can't afford it. Now, some will come back and say, hey, this is a new industry, it's going to create new jobs. Well, I'll, I'll take you back to that CRS report. And uh, one of the things that I find kind of interesting is to say, to address the concerns that have been raised, there, this Aqua Bounty company is proposing producing all the salmon eggs uh, in Canada, then they ship them to Panama, they grow and process in Panama, and then they ship this, this fish, this frankenfish, to the United States for, for resale. So basically, we get all the harm, we don't get any jobs, um, but what we're doing is we're putting at risk. We're putting at risk the existing jobs within the seafood industry in this country. Priority number one. Madam President, I see that my time has expired. 
Uh, as I mentioned, I would ask that the CRS report be made a part of the record, as well as several letters of, of support uh, that I support for my amendment that I would ask to be included as part of the record. And uh, with that, I will yield. With that objection, so ordered. Thank you.